searched me and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but look, Lord, you know it all together. You encircle me behind and in front, and you place your hand upon me. This knowledge is beyond me. It's lofty. I can't attain it. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. Or if I make my bed in the underworld, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and go to the farthest parts of the sea, even there will I be guided by your hand and your right hand will keep me. If I say, only let me be covered by the dark and the light about me be night, even the dark is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for dark and light are the same to you. My flesh was made by you and my parts joined together in my mother's body. I will give you praise, for I am strangely and delicately formed. Your works are great wonders, and of this my soul is fully conscious. My frame was not unseen by you when I was made secretly and strangely formed in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book, all my days were recorded, even those which were purposed before they had come into being. How dear are your thoughts to me, O oh God! How great is the number of them! If I made up their number, it would be more than the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. Oh God, let the secrets of my heart be uncovered, and let my wandering thoughts be tested. See if there is any way of sorrow in me, and be my guide in the eternal way.
Father God, Lord, we just thank you this evening. And Lord, we thank you, God, for your visitation. We thank you, God, for your habitation. We thank you, Lord, that you didn't just come for a moment and then leave us without help. You have given us help, help of the Holy Spirit. You have given us help, your written word. God, you've given us your help, the body of Christ. Tonight, Lord, let us seek you and all that, that is in you as you search us and all that's in us and see if there be any unclean thing, any wicked thing in us. We ask God that you would reveal it and that God give us the courage to turn from it and turn to you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. <clears throat> Psalm 139. That was the reading this evening. <clears throat> and uh, if I say this, let's, let's see if I get any amens. God is perfect. Amen. He has perfect knowledge. Amen. God has perfect knowledge of everyone. Amen. He knows everything about you. You're, you're, he knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. Amen. Um, why is it that we live like he doesn't? <laughs> Um, I mean, think about it. Uh, in, in today's society, you know, especially with all the means that we have, you know, rarely does anybody go any place where they haven't got some means to take a picture. You know, and they're still, I don't know, they're still that crazy. Let me take a selfie. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, that whole, okay, so we all do this. Everyone is, we all do this. Uh, we, we, we share smiling photos with our friends. Uh, maybe yeah, 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 stop it. Uh, <laughs> but here's the, or you know, you share these smiling photos. It, wait, it, wait, here's the, so knowing full well that a few moments ago you just had a spat, mm -hmm. but you're trying to share a, a, a smiling photo. Uh, we spend too much time uh, well, here, making our food instant worthy. <coughs> But it's cold by the time we even start to eat it. You ever notice that? I just, I just, I, um, everyone is guilty. Well, what are we guilty of? We're guilty of at least putting only the best versions of ourselves on social media. Now, some people don't, but they maybe they should learn something from those of us who do. But. <laughs> But the thing is, though, maybe we need to learn a lesson from them. If you can see who they really are, of course, I understand there's some things that that, that hadn't ought to be, they shouldn't be doing, they shouldn't be in these places, they shouldn't be in these activities, but, they, but they, because there's no shame. But why is it that we think we need to look a particular way? I mean, you think about this. We, 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 we present our, we, we put what would be called the proverbial best foot forward. But you're hiding the other foot. You ever hear that, that, uh, that, you know, you're waiting for the shoe to drop? Well, you're waiting for the other foot to show up. Come on. Uh, maybe it's the one you forgot to put your shoes on. But the thing is, though, everybody's guilty of putting only the best versions of ourselves forward, especially we're trying to show it on social media, both in, in what we show and, oh, wait, and, oh, wait, let's don't forget this part. What about what we leave out? We leave out certain things. Sometimes we don't want people to know our faults because we're afraid that they might not like us. Or maybe we don't want people to think, maybe, maybe, that, listen, we want them to think better of us because the real us isn't all that good. Or that. Are you getting what I'm saying tonight? Mm -hmm. Psalm 139. It talks about God's knowledge of us. Look at this. It's, and and may, maybe, you did, maybe if you, you've you never done this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to, let me ask this question. Have you ever prayed, oh, Lord, that you would slay the wicked? God, that you would slay the wicked. <laughs> it, would, the, anybody, would anybody be left? No. <laughs> Think about this. I, I want, I'm going to give you this. As a, this is free, okay? This is a side note. It's free. If you're going to pray for somebody, how about you pray life over them? How about you, I love the song. I speak the name of Jesus over you. I'm going to, I'm going to, pray, I'm going to pray Jesus song over them. I'm going to pray life over them. <clears throat> Amen? But sometimes we just don't want people to see our faults. And I think it's important for us to learn how to be vulnerable. Can we get real tonight? Well, who is it you said, can we talk? 
Remember the remember what was that lady's name? Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Can we talk? <laughs> um So we, we show our best forward because we don't want people to see our faults. What if I told you we don't have to worry about that with God? You, you don't have to worry about it. He sees them. He knows our mistakes. He knows our shortcomings. He knows our weakness. He knows everything about us yet. It's interesting how it is he still loves us. What, well, what's wrong? Romans uh, 5 and 8 tells us that, that God, he demonstrates his own love toward us. He demonstrates his own love towards us. How does he do it? By sending his son to die on the cross. While we were what? Sinners. While we were yet sinners. Now, here's the thing. Some of us have taken it a license. Okay, God loves me, so I guess I'm okay, and I can continue to live the way I am. <laughs> Scripture says, you know, that we're, uh, <laughs> where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So should we stay in our sin? <clears throat> and he does forbid it, but we do it anyway. Uh, uh, I mean, think about this. Yeah, okay, I know he loves us. And, and out there, there's, there's a group, well, you know, God loves everybody, and he's going to save somebody somehow. Let me tell you how that somehow is. There's only one way God right, saved us, amen. and that's through his son on the cross. And there's only one way for us to appropriate that. Number one, salvation is a free gift. Mm -hmm. But if you, are, if you aren't living out that free gift, he said, I came to give you life and give it to you well, how? More, more abundantly. I've, I've, come, listen, I've come to make you a new person. You, I, I've come to create in you uh, to become a new creature in Christ. You're not supposed to be the old creature. If you're tr listen, you can believe on Jesus all you like, but so does the devil and demons. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're living like the devil and demons, how many of you know what their end is? <laughs> okay. But here's here, let, let's let's look at. I mean, you can find lots of examples in the Scripture. And tonight, we'll after our, our last song, we'll have a little talk about this. At least I hope we do. We'll see what kind of. Um, what kind of wisdom you can impart to me tonight. But in Psalm 139, David is, um, well, he's, he's kind of in awe. Uh, he, he kind of marvels at how much God knows about him. You, uh, you ever think about that? You ever wonder how, just even if somebody, a person, knows about you? I was, uh, uh, I was uh, somewhere today, and as I was in the waiting room waiting for my appointment, I wasn't saying nothing to nobody. I was just sitting there minding my own business. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and next thing you know, so somebody in their chair is straight across me sitting there. I'm just sitting there. One of them says, I think I know him. Got my attention. I looked up. Didn't look familiar at all. His wife says, I think he's a pastor. <laughs> okay, so I felt a little better. <laughs> wait, that leaves you wondering, wait a minute, what might they know about me, right? <laughs> so finally, one, are you? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. I didn't ask them how they knew, but... <laughs> I would um, they did get my name before they left, so who knows? But David's here, he's, he's just absolutely amazed at the way God knows everything about him. And at the end of the psalm, he, he, he lays hold, he, he takes, he embraces this opportunity to be vulnerable. This is, many of us, we, we, we've got, we, we got different shields. Some shields are, you know, you, you get you get defensive, and other times we have these shields that are that will they'll like for instance you'll crack a joke when joke when it's not even appropriate because that's all you can do is crack a joke because you don't want nobody to see the real you. Or worse, or or maybe then I don't know if it's worse or or maybe you just kind of clam up or you kind of back away. But you need to understand the importance of being vulnerable. The, the sad thing is. We do. We have these habits. We have these 
these quirks that we think is hiding us and you're not hiding anything. You might, you might fool some of the people some of the time. Actually, you might fool some people all the time and some people some of the time. But can I tell you, you won't fool God any of the time. And the scripture talks about fooling yourself, deceiving yourself. So David looks at this opportunity and he, he lays hold of it. And he says this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any offensive, any wicked way in me. And then lead me in the way everlasting. Now, think of, maybe you haven't thought of it. Look at this is a bold prayer for David. Anybody know what they say about David? He's a man after He's a man after God's own heart. Man, he must never he must never have done nothing wrong. But wait! But if we look, we, we get in Scripture, and we look at uh, well, Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Anybody got that yet? Second Samuel. I'm going the wrong way. No, I'm not. I'm writing the right way. I'm going this way. Second Samuel, and uh, and the eleventh and, and oh, eleventh and twelfth chapter. I'm not going to read it all for you tonight. What verse? The eleventh and the twelfth chapter. Okay. <laughs> um, so what we find here in Second Samuel eleven, we see David, Bathsheba, and Uriah. Anybody know who Uriah is? Was Uriah was well? He was he was a uh, he was a soldier. Matter of fact, he was a, he was a commanding soldier. He's a Hittite, amen. Uh, he was Bathsheba's husband. And in one one time, uh, there, there was this time when you know, uh, apparently David was out up there uh, on the rooftop and, and he looked down to the next building and he saw this woman. Okay, yeah. Ed, Ed you, 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 you saw that, didn't you? Oh. Um, <laughs> are we praying about it later? But as you read through this, you'll find out what he did. Um. But he had already done a bunch of stuff. We got Amen. Uh, but he yeah, did. But good. even after everything happens, even after he's he's uh, his whole his whole scenario, he's trying to cover things up. He's trying to make it. He's trying to cover up what he's done. Uh, he tries to get. You know, well, if you if you read the story, you'll find out that he. What's this? This is the king commanding this this commanding officer to come home. You know, the, the, but the other the other soldiers are on the front lines. And, and uh, he commands, like, come on home. You've been on the front line for a while. Come on and rest and eat. And he wouldn't eat, neither would he lay with his wife. So it didn't work out. He didn't scheme. And actually, uh, King David was a little bit upset. What in the world? What's wrong with you, man? What, you're here? You know, and, and what was Uriah's response? He couldn't do these things knowing that the men... That he that listen that his men he was give, are out there on the front lines he couldn't bring himself to even go to to sleep with his wife much less lay with his wife he just couldn't do it so he said all right well this didn't work so what's he do he has him sent to the front line he said listen uh, here's what I want to have happen I want this man put I want I want wherever that I want wherever the battle is the the heaviest the hottest and the most dangerous I want him put right out there I want him out in the front. And did you know that uh, David was successful in getting Uriah killed? Mm -hmm. Now you might have thought that he'd gotten away with something, but apparently not, because in the cha in the twelfth chapter, Nathan comes to David. I know what you did. And he said, "There were two men in one city, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had exceeding the many flocks and herds." But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and his children. It ate of his own food and drank of his own cup and lay in his own bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler who came to the rich man, who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for me, a wayfaring man, who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. 
Now, David hears a story, and he gets up. Who is this man? Are you kidding me right now? Who, what kind of a dirty dog would do something like this? Now, that's not what it says, but that's what it means. That yeah, is. And he says, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. What did Nathan say? Oh, David. David, you are the guy. You're the man. Now David, being a warrior king, could have struck him down. What if, what if you thought of it this way? Suddenly the truth is out. And instead of him wanting to strike out at the man who told him about it, instead of him wanting to kill that man, it got David right where he got David in his heart. See, I think what the problem is, is that a lot of these things that we do, these little ticks and these little quirks and these little things that we do, the shields when they come up is because uh, we don't want to be vulnerable to have anything get to our hearts, especially the truth. See, it's important for us to be vulnerable. Now, I'm not telling you just so you know, I don't want to see you and I don't want to hear all your dirty laundry. I already know too much as it is. And I got enough of my own. Amen. <laughs> but this was a bold prayer for David. He had done plenty of things, right? Sister Rosie, even before this, he'd done some, he had done some not, not so well, good stuff. Well, this happened because he wasn't in the place he ought to be, like out on the battlefield. Because Amen. he was the commander, the captain. But when we read this, we find out, though, when it came out, shields didn't come up. Fell on his face before God. Mm -hmm. And he says, God is, is against you, and you only have I done this. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a second. What about Nathan? Nathan knew about it. What about you? Right? Wait, what about? What, wait, no, wait. And when it comes right down to it, you violated his trust with God. Yeah. Wait, wait, get this. You got to know who you are, where you stand, what to do, according to what Sister Rosa just told him. What the, it's backed up by the scripture. Um, he forgot who he was. Right. He didn't remember where, he, where, he, where what his standing he was. was. Right. And he certainly didn't do the right things. Yeah. And so, we, you know, you continue on thinking you can get away with these things. Can I tell you? No. First off, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be morbid about this, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. Did you know not one of us gets out of here alive. Nobody does. What's this? The Bible says it's appointed unto man to... And then? And then the judgment. So, how many of you want to wake up in eternity? I've, I've said this before. How many of you want that home in glory land? That home in heaven? You got to want those three homes. That, that heavenly home, that Christian home, and that church home. And if you're truly born again, you're going to want all three. And you're going. And I, I get it. You know, there are things in our homes. There's things in our lives. That it's not perfect. I'm not talking about that per se. But I'm here to tell you, if we would just learn how to pray like David did. I mean, our best step often comes on the other side of that prayer that was vulnerable. You know, here's the thing. Watch it. So we come boldly before the throne of grace, right? We come boldly in, in, the, in the presence of God, and we're making our claims, and we're making our, our, we've got our shopping list, and all the, we're coming boldly. We have this boldness about us when I think we might want to be a little bit less bold. Yeah, justification. When we ask God to examine our hearts, what do you expect him to do? We ask him, Lord, search me. Search me, O oh God. And, 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 and know my heart. Look, I, Lord, I want, you to, I want you to look deep into my heart. He already knows your heart. I want you to look deep into my heart. Test me. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. Know my know my doubts. Know my, my concerns. 
And oh, by the way, Lord, if there's any wicked way in me at all. So you go before him. You say the prayer. He's going to search your heart. But I, 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 are you going to just get up from there and not wait for an answer? I ask him to search my heart. Wait. And lead me. Lead me. Lead me in the way. How, how's it go? Lead me in the way everlasting. I'll say it again. Our best step. Remember that one foot in front of the other? Our best step often comes on the backside of a prayer where you got where you got real with God. Where you decided that, you know what, I, I, I'm, not ha I, I'm not happy with the way I am. I'm not who I'm supposed to be. And, and you get honest, you say, I, my, I'm not standing where God, I'm not in a right standing with God. Some of us even here tonight, you think you want people to believe you're in a right standing with God, but you're not. And you're not going to pray this prayer, but let me give you this. What if you prayed this prayer every day? Oh, I don't know, for a week? What if that was your prayer? Well, Pastor, I, wait, I, I, I've used this, by the way, so I'm using it tonight. I just don't really know how to, I don't know what to pray. Here you go. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Make that your prayer. Well, Lord, uh, thank you for this food that we're about to eat. Bless it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's all we do. Aren't you glad that you got the food to eat? Aren't you glad that he probably heard that prayer and you're probably going to be blessed? <laughs> but what if you prayed like this? What if you prayed this prayer? You see, we need to realize something. Anybody know what John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world. No, everybody, not just, I'm not looking for, we're not in a race. Everybody together. For God so loved the world, that he gave his begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but all right, somebody pick up. What about, can you can you recite the 17th verse? For God sent not his son to do what? To condemn the world. That, but the world through him, oh wait, how, how can one be saved? Through him only. That the world through him would be saved. You say, well, that, that, I'm sure glad about that. I'm sure glad he didn't come to condemn. And listen, if you're like Christ, you're not going to be condemning either. You're going to be praying for your you're going to be praying for your friends and your relatives and your enemies. You're going to pray life. You're I getting this? You're going to pray life towards them. You're going to pray the wisdom of God. You're going to pray and, and before you go praying conviction on somebody else, you might want to respond to it yourself first. Amen. You say, well, okay, how does this work? Well, John chapter 15, uh, verse 10 says this, if you keep my commandments. Well, listen, well, you know, God loves everybody. And he never, he'll never let nobody die because it's not his desire. That's true. But listen to what he says. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. If you break his commandments, you're, gonna, you're not going to abide in his love. I know the love of God. Listen, love covers a multitude of sins. Somebody say, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but look at what he says. Just, this is Jesus. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his loves. And then he says, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. If you pray a prayer, like in the psalm, in those, those, those few verses, you pray that, and you pray it sincerely, and you wait for God to lead you, and you start anticipating that he's going to lead you. Maybe, maybe you should do it two or three times a day. This is one of my favorite prayers. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night. I've got to tell you, what I pray in the morning, I'll forget by lunchtime. In the highways and the byways. So, I, let me, I'm going to give you this. Let's just, this, this is the zinger right here. Who do you think you're... Well, I'll ask. Who are you trying to impress? Yourself. I mean, and if we could just stop feeling like we have to impress God. 
God, look what I can do. Wait, stop. Let's see what he has done already. I'll say it again. Maybe we need to be a little bit less bold when we come to that throne, when we come to the, come to the throne of grace. We, maybe we should humble ourselves. Well, we should humble ourselves in the sight of God. But if we would just stop feeling like we had to impress God. You ready for this? When you decide to lay your pride away aside, when you decide to lay aside your pride, when you humble yourself in the sight of God, only then will you ever start being changed by Him. We want to see others. We want to see others have their lives changed, and and I don't have time for this. It's a, it's a, it'll be another message, but. Uh, well, if you would just stop that smoking, if you just stop that drinking, if you just stop watching that movie, if you just stop this, stop that. How about you stop telling them that kind of stuff and you just tell them, hey, if you just humble yourself in the sight of God. Because there's a lot of us, you stop drinking, you stop watching the movies, you stop smoking. You, are you getting this? And just because you stopped all those things, you think you're going to impress God. And it doesn't work that way. Because when we're changed, when we are truly changed by the love of God, just think about this. If someone's changed by the love of God, all this other stuff starts to go away. I, I love that. Seek ye first. What? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. And then what? All right. And then these things get added. What kind of things? Some of us, we like to use that as a prosperity type of a message. What if I told you there is no greater prosperity than being in a right standing right. with God? There's no greater place than to be in a right standing with God. And listen, if, if he blesses you with worldly wealth, praise the Lord. What are you going to do with that wealth? Use it, to, use it to further the kingdom? Sure, that's what we should do. But And just to be clear, he doesn't mind that you got nice cars, and he doesn't mind you got a big bank account. He doesn't, but wait, seek him first. His righteousness. Right? Yeah. And what's the greatest thing you could ask for? And to walk with him daily. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, what is my plea?
Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have given to us tonight. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to make our lives an offering yes, of quiet commitment to weave or perhaps just thread love through the torn garments of this world. Lord, the very fabric of our society has been ravaged. And sometimes it seems as if it's unraveling. Lord, I ask this morning, or ask this evening, Lord, that you would bind us together. Lord, that you would weave it together. And that, Lord, that you would use us in a mighty way as we follow after you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.